Hello friends, in this video I will be discussing topological sort. So this is an important application of DFS algorithm. So we can solve this problem using DFS traversal. Okay. So the application of topological sort is job scheduling. So there will be many jobs available. Each vertex suppose considered as a job. So job can be either dependent or it can be either independent. Okay. So if we consider job 3, so job 3 is dependent on job 2 and job 1. So before processing job 3, it is important to process job 2 and job 1. Okay. So by this way, this topological sort helps in job scheduling. And we are going to observe this topological sort in case of directed acyclic graph. So directed acyclic graph means directed graph having no cycles. Okay. So we are going to observe this in this type of graph. So basically this vertex are considered as a job. It can be dependent or independent. If we consider job 0 and job 2. So job 0 and job 2 are independent jobs. So independent jobs need to be processed first like before dependent jobs. So if we consider this graph its topological sort will be first we need to print independent jobs like it can be 0 okay then 2 then after that we need to print on the vertex to which it is dependent on these type of jobs. Suppose one is dependent on job 0 and job 0 is already processed. So we can have one. Okay. Now if we come to 3, 3 was dependent on job 1 and job 2. So job 1 and job 2 is already processed. Now we can process job 3. Now come to job 4. Job 4 was dependent on 3 and 2. So 3 and 2, if we see it's already processed, now we can have job 4. So basically independent jobs are processed first as compared to dependent jobs. And for a graph, there can be multiple topological sort. Okay, like we can start DFS from vertex 2 also. Like vertex 2 first processed, then after that vertex 0 will be processed so 2 and 0 are independent jobs and independent jobs need to be processed first before dependent jobs. Okay. So right now I am going to perform this for this graph DFS traversal. So suppose we are going to start our DFS traversal from vertex 0. Okay. Now we will be finding its adjacent vertex. So its adjacent vertex is vertex 1. So in DFS, we are going to leave the current vertex and start exploring the unvisited adjacent vertex. So from DFS 0, we will go to DFS to perform DFS for vertex 1. Now the adjacent vertex of vertex 1 is 3. Now from DFS 1, we will jump to DFS of vertex 3. Now from 3, the adjacent vertex available is vertex 4. From 3 we will go to 4. Okay. Now from 4, from vertex 4, there are no adjacent vertices available. There are no adjacent vertices available. So what we need to do is that we need to push this 4 inside stack and start returning back to the caller of this DFS 4. Okay. Now from vertex 4 as there are no adjacent vertices available, no possibilities are left to apply DFS traversal. So what we need to do is that we need to push this 4 inside stack and return back to the caller. The caller of DFS 4 is DFS 3. Now we will check if any adjacent vertex is left from vertex 3 or not. So if we see vertex 3, there are no adjacent vertices available. So what we need to do is that we need to push this 3 inside the stack and start returning back to the caller of DFS 3. 
So the color of DFS3 is DFS1. Now again we are going to check if there are any unvisited vertices available adjacent to vertex 1 or not. So right now there are no possibilities left. So we are going to push this vertex 1 inside the stack and start returning back to the caller of DFS1. The caller of DFS1 is DFS0. Now from 0 again there are no vertices, adjacent vertices available to traverse. So what we need to do is that we need to push vertex 0 inside the stack and start returning back to the caller of DFS0. So the caller of DFS0 is the main function. Okay, is the main function. Now, this main function will contain a loop. Why? Because our graph is directed graph. So, in order to handle unvisited vertices or left out vertices, we will use for loops. So, this for loop will be iterating from what i is equals to 0 to i equals to number of vertices. So, 0 we have already traversed. Now, it will increase its value from 0 to 1. And inside visited array, we are going to check whether vertex 1 is visited or not. So vertex 1 is visited, so it will not call DFS for vertex 1. Now come vertex 2. So vertex 2 is not visited. So if vertex 2 is not visited, it will call DFS for vertex 2. So if we go to vertex 2, we will find that the adjacent vertices available is vertex 3 and vertex 4. But vertex 3 and vertex 4 is already visited if we see this visited array. So it means that there are no possibilities left. So what we need to do is that for DFS2, we need to push this 2 inside the stack and start returning back to the caller of DFS2. So the caller of DFS2 is again the main function. And if we notice the visited array, we have already visited or explored the vertices of the graph. So there are no vertex left to be explored or visited. So at last we need to print this stack. So the output will be 2, 0, 1, 3, 4. So if we match this output by looking at the graph, we find that vertex 2 and vertex 0 are independent vertex. Okay. So if we consider these vertex as jobs, it means that vertex 2 and vertex 0 are independent jobs. Now, now come vertex 1. So vertex 1 is only dependent on vertex 0. It means we need to process vertex 0 first. So vertex 0 is already processed. Then yes, we can process vertex 1. Now from vertex 1, it's vertex 3. Vertex 3 is dependent on 1, 2. So already we have processed vertex 1 and vertex 2. Next is vertex 3 to be processed. So we have processed vertex 3. Next come vertex 4. So vertex 4 is dependent on 2 and 3. And 2 and 3 we have already processed. So we can process vertex 4. So the conclusion of topological sort is independent jobs need to be processed first before dependent jobs. And it is only applicable in case of directed acyclic graph. The code snippet, it's quite similar as we have already performed DFS algorithm. So we need to write a DFS code and inside the DFS code we need to add one thing that is stack data structure. Okay, so this stack data structure which basically stores vertex. Okay, so if we start traversing this graph from vertex 0 using DFS traversal, we are going to put this vertex 0 after traversing its adjacent vertices, after traversing its whole adjacent vertices. Like suppose we are going to start traversing this graph using vertex 0, its adjacent vertex is vertex 1. We need to again start exploring vertex 1. From vertex 1 again we went to vertex 3. From vertex 3 again we went to vertex 4. Now there are no possibilities left for vertex 4 to traverse. So we will put this 4 inside the stack. Now we'll come to vertex 3. Now again there are no possibilities left for vertex 3 to traverse. So we'll put this 3 inside the stack. Again we will come to 1. No possibilities left. No adjacent vertices are there connected to 1. So we'll push 1 inside the stack. Okay. Now next comes vertex 0. So for from vertex 0 again there are no possibilities left. Then we will push it inside the stack. So 
if we observe this flow we find that the moment we are going to apply or going to have a start vertex say 0 what we are doing is that we are traversing its adjacent vertices and filling it into the stack and at last we are filling that vertex from where we have started okay so if we observe this it's nothing but in decreasing order of their finish time because vertex 4 is being finished first then from vertex 4 we went to vertex 3 now vertex 3 has completed its traversal has completed its exploration towards unvisited vertices so we have finished its processing time now next come vertex 1 again we have finished its processing time now next come vertex 0 so vertex 0 has high finishing time as compared to these all vertices so we are going to fill this tag in order of decreasing order of their finish time so if we see vertex 2 and vertex 0 has high finishing time if we start from vertex 0 because from 0 one, we move to 1 to 3 to 4 4 finished first then come to 3 3 finished second now come to 1 1 finished at third processing time from 1 we come to 0 0 is the highest processing time as compared to 1 3 and 4 now the control will move back to vertex 2 now vertex 2 finishes okay so by we are going to fill this tag in decreasing order of the finish time so if we consider this main function inside main function i have created a visited array having any in initial value as false have made a stack data structure and have created a loop this loop is to handle this directed graph so we are going to start from i equals to 0 in visited array we find that vertex i is not visited okay vertex i is not visited so what we need to do is that we need to call dfs for vertex i okay so we'll call dfs for vertex i inside this dfs function i have passed graph this s means i means vertex 0 this visited array and stack data structure so we are going to pass the reference of stack data structure inside this dfs function now what we will do is that we'll perform simple dfs algorithm we'll make this visited s true so vertex 0 is visited and start iterating its adjacent vertices so its adjacent vertex is vertex 1 we will check for vertex 1 whether it is visited or not so vertex 1 is not visited then we are going to call dfs for vertex 1 now we are going to call dfs for vertex 1 if we see this recursive tree from dfs 0 we went to dfs 1 now from dfs 1 again it will be like visited of 1 will be true we are going to iterate its adjacent vertex its adjacent vertex is vertex 3 now we are going to call dfs for vertex 3 for vertex 3 we are going to call okay now if we see this recursive tree from dfs 1 we are going to call for dfs 3 now again visited of 3 will be true visited of 3 will be true again we are going to iterate its adjacent vertex its adjacent vertex is vertex 4 visited of 4 is false so if it is false if we see in visited array visited of 4 is false so we are going to call this dfs recursive dfs again for vertex 4 now we are in this so we will mark visited of 4 as true after that we are going to iterate its adjacent vertices so if we see this there are no possibilities left no unvisited adjacent vertex is connected with vertex 4 so this statement will not perform it will not work control will come to the stack and it will push vertex 4 inside the stack okay it will push vertex 4 now from vertex 4 control will move back to the caller of vertex 4 which is vertex 3 now controller will come in this statement in this statement and it will perform iteration for its remaining unvisited vertex or unexplored vertex so if we see this vertex 3 there are no unvisited or unexplored vertices left like there are no possibilities left so what it will do is that again this state set of statements will not execute and control will come back to stack dot push s so it will push vertex 3 okay so after that again it will return back to the caller which is vertex 1 so again controller will come to this statement 
and it will start iterating for the next unvisited or unexplored vertex so there are no unvisited vertex left so controller will come back to stack again and it will push vertex 1 similarly it will go to vertex 0 means again in this statement in this line and it will start iterating for next unvisited vertices so there are no unvisited vertices left controller will come back it will won't execute this statement it will come back to this st dot push and s will be 0 so 0 is getting pushed inside the stack now we have this explored this set of vertices now controller will go back to the caller of dfs0 the caller of dfs0 is main function and it will come back in this line so from this it will start iterating for its next value so initially the value was 0 it will increase to 1 inside visited array if we see vertex 1 it's already traversed so it will again increase its value from 1 to 2 so visited of 2 if we see inside this visited array it is false so control what it will do it will call recursive function dfs function for vertex 2 and it will go inside this so if we see vertex 2 there are no possibilities left so what it will do is that it will mark visited of 2 as true and this for loop will not execute controller will come back to this tag dot push s and the value of s is 2 it will push 2 inside the stack so we are going to get 2 0 1 3 4 at last we need to print this stack so the output we will be getting is 2 0 1 3 4 which is nothing but topological sort of this directed acyclic graph so now from vertex 2 controller will come back to the caller of dfs2 as no unvisited vertices or no adjacent vertices are there to traverse with so it will come back to the caller the caller is the main function now from 2 it will again increase to 3 3 is already visited 3 to 4 4 is already visited so ultimately we have visited and traversed and explored all the vertices so at last we are going to print this stack so for a graph there can be more than one topological sort available so this is all about topological sort